Hi there, I'm Tammy and I'm really excited to be here for the AWS Chaos and Resilience online series. Today I'm here to talk to you about Chaos Engineering for DevOps. I'm Tammy X Bryant on Twitter and I work at Gremlin as a principal SRE. You can drop me an email anytime to Tammy at gremlin.com. So today we're going to talk about a few things. First off, we'll set the tone. How can you practice chaos engineering in a DevOps culture? Then we'll talk about shifting left, integrating chaos engineering in the CI CD pipeline. Then we'll talk about validating, monitoring, and alerting. High visibility from staging to production, not just production. Then we'll close off with lessons. So I'll share some chaos engineering success stories, case studies, and research. How can you practice chaos engineering in a DevOps culture? Well, this is a cool quote that I heard recently. Good luck is when opportunity meets preparation, while bad luck is when lack of preparation meets reality. Eliyahu Goldratt. This is what we're going to talk about today. How we can actually do chaos engineering when we're trying to move fast, we're trying to compete, and we're trying to make sure that customers always have the best experience ever. So, you know, you can do chaos engineering in a world where you could do it either in person or remote on Zoom, totally cool. But the important thing is doing it together and having more than just one person doing it. So something that we've done to make it really collaborative is create different roles. We have general, commander, scribe and observer as the different roles when we're running chaos engineering experiments. We actually prefer to have four folks doing the experiments. So you just don't have a single point of failure, a single person that understands all the different issues. Get that single point of failure? We don't want that. We want lots of people to get educated and learn about the different failure modes that impact our systems. And it's a really fast and effective way to do it. The fastest game day we ever run with folks on the call was 10 minutes. But you can also do it in an automated way within your CI CD pipelines and then review the results later on when you get time. And I'm Australian, so I just wanted to also throw it out there that I'm super excited to be speaking here today with an Australian audience. Most of Gremlin's based in the USA, um, and I actually live in the USA right now in Florida, but I also used to work for Gremlin in Australia. So it's great to be here. And I previously worked at the National Australia Bank for six years. So here are some of the DevOps goals. Speed, rapid delivery, reliability, scale, improve collaboration and security. So say for example, if our DevOps goal and benefit is speed, we wanna be able to move at high velocity and then have teams using microservices and continuous delivery to take ownership of their own code and own applications. Then what's our chaos engineering partner in chaos goals? Well, we wanna be able to give teams ownership and tools to easily run their own chaos engineering experiments on containers, services, or hosts, and even in the CI CD pipeline. If one of our benefits is rapid delivery, then a chaos engineering partner in chaos goal would be to automatically run a gauntlet of attacks during the deployment process, which is what we're going to do today. I'll actually show you a demo of how you can build that out with Gremlin, Jenkins, code build and code deploy uh, on AWS. Reliability. Some of the really important use cases are actually around monitoring and alerting. So you can actually ensure that teams are validating their monitoring and alerting using chaos engineering and that they're verifying backups, restores, and other types of very important critical processes. You can also use chaos engineering to validate SLOs and SLIs, and you can meet SLAs despite the chaos that naturally happens in our systems. It helps you learn how to gracefully handle failure. Scale. We can ensure that teams are validating auto scaling and ensuring that hosts and containers are added and removed gracefully in the amount of time that we expect so that customers are always served. And we can improve collaboration. We can enable teams to run their own game days and mini game days. We can give them the tools to take ownership and be accountable for resolving issues. And lastly, security. 
We can ensure that the right people have the right access to handle critical failures. How many times has this happened in an organization you've worked at, where folks weren't actually able to resolve an incident due to some security permissions that they needed to get last minute? You can prevent issues by injecting failure on purpose up front and making sure that everyone has the right permissions to be able to resolve issues when they happen and it's critical. You can utilize fire drills as a practice to prevent issues. Now let's chat about shifting left. I wanna get into the demos. So here I'm gonna show you how you can integrate chaos engineering in your CI CD pipeline. This is the demo environment that I've built for you today that we'll be using. The idea here is we wanna maximize benefits by practicing automated chaos engineering within your pipelines. So here we've got GitHub for our source control, AWS code build, to build our code and our application, Jenkins for tests, AWS code deploy to deploy first to our staging environment. Then we have Gremlin being used with Jenkins to actually craft this chaos staging pipeline that runs a series of chaos engineering attacks, a gauntlet before the code is deployed to production using AWS code deploy. And then we have another series, a gauntlet, which I recommend only when you're ready for it in production to ensure that we can handle the same types of failure modes. Like for example, auto scaling will trigger auto scaling by injecting a CPU, CPU attack. So we'll consume CPU resources, spin up more hosts. That's how it should work, right? And then we'll validate in monitoring and alerting that everything's looking good. That's just one example of a gauntlet style attack that we should be doing as part of our pipelines work, pipeline work every time we're deploying new code. And lastly, we'll do our monitoring with CloudWatch. Production monitoring, but also don't forget staging monitoring. That's important too. So this is what our architecture looks like, how we've built out this demo environment. Many operations teams use CI CD these days. Jenkins is very popular. Pipelines are well known to be very useful for teams. Helps you save a lot of time, do a lot of automated work. And it also helps you validate that everything is working as expected, which is why we want to inject our chaos engineering attacks into the pipelines as we're building and deploying our code to our different environments. We'll actually be using stages in Jenkins to inject a controlled amount of failure, we'll specify the parameters, and then we'll add another final stage that allows you to actually optionally halt the attack as you observe it too. You can do this in an automated way as well. Say for example, if you notice a failure, you can fail the deploy on purpose, or if you want, you can just send an alert and say, this is what happened, we noticed a failure. Now let's get into the demo. Alrighty, so for our demo, what we have here is a GitHub repo that is a Python application um, and it's set up to be built and deployed with Jenkins. Um, so I'm just gonna refresh that. You can see here, we made an update 15 seconds ago. Um, so with this application, what we actually have is we have set up everything so that it will be actually pulled, um, you know, Jenkins will understand, yep, there's been an update made to this repo and it's going to actually build it and then deploy it. So let's check out how we did that. First off, we've got a cloud formation template and this template um, enables us to use code build um, to build up the Jenkins project, code deploy, um, another AWS service um, to be able to deploy our application. We have a demo fleet um, that we've created. Um, and then on EC2 instances, we also have a load balancer that sits in front of our EC2 instance. Um, right now we just have one instance, but we have the ability to scale up based on auto scaling needs, which is set to be configured based on CPU usage. And the cool thing about chaos engineering is um, using Gremlin, we can inject CPU and that will then actually trigger the auto scaling to happen which means we'll know if we set everything up correctly. 
Uh, then we also have DNS uh, name there. And then we have our S3 bucket for our artifact um, that we use with Jenkins. So that's how we set this all up. You can definitely get this yourself. I've got a link to it at the end of this presentation. Um, if you want to run this project and try it out. Okay, so this is what the application looks like um, when we deploy it. So you can see here it's a Python application um, using a lot of different tools. And now let's go check out our Jenkins server that we have running on um, Amazon as well. It's actually running on an EC2 instance. You can see it here. Um, so that's also something you can do with AWS. And um, okay, here, so you can see over here, we're actually running our um, project right now. It did realize there's been an update and it's starting to run that. So you can see here, what is happening is um, it was checking the repo. It understood, yep, an update was made to that repo. It's now going through and um, running all of the steps that we've configured. Once that is all good, then it's actually going to trigger um, a chaos pipeline to run. So it's going to build the code. It's going to deploy it to the staging environment. And then now it's going to trigger this chaos, staging chaos pipeline. So I'm just going to click over there. And the idea here is that once our code has actually been deployed to the staging environment, we want to run a chaos engineering gauntlet. So we want to run a series of different attacks. Um, and that's going to help us be able to make sure that this new code is working just as good as our old code was. And it hasn't introduced any new failure modes or caused any different types of issues that we weren't expecting. Um, so I'm just going to show you that as well. So if I click over here, click on logs and then um, click here, you can actually now open up the gremlin attack that automatically got triggered by Jenkins. Um, so the idea of how we're building this is we're now going to be running this CPU attack. It's running right now, we're running it for quite a long time to make sure that we can test everything out well. And we're going to hit all four cores on the host that we've deployed to, and it's going to be running at 50%. So why would we want to do it in this way? So we've got our Jenkins Gremlin um, project that then runs, deploys our code to staging, tests everything, looks good. Then it runs this pipeline. The idea behind this is that it really is, um, you know, following the Unix philosophy of being simple, short, clear, modular, and just a really nice way to piece things together. So then they're reusable by other developers. Um, so this means that any um, developer your organization could reuse the chaos pipeline because it really is a gauntlet of attacks that can be run on staging by anybody whenever they trigger some new code or run a new project. So this is a nice way to scale out your chaos engineering work and have it really set up to just do the work for you, which we all love. Okay. So I'm going to just go back and show you that there, everything's looking good. So the other thing we want to see is, can we see this in um, CloudWatch? So let's check that out. Um, we are going to be running our attacks here. So we'll wait for this to pop up. What we should see actually is some alarms go off later on. This is our instance, our code deployed demo instance that we've actually deployed our application to. So you can see that is deployed here. You've run automated chaos engineering attacks with Gremlin and Jenkins using a chaos pipeline. Awesome. Everything's looking good. We've got our new code there and we're now running our attack, um, on here. So we could do some other stuff. We could also use Gremlin to inject packet loss, um, latency. There's a whole bunch of different types of attacks we could do. We could do some black hole attacks, which is kind of like region failover, process killer, shutdown, time travel. You can see all the different types of attacks here, disk IO memory. But what we're going to do right now is just focus on the auto scaling use case, validating auto scaling and also validating our monitoring and alerting um, works as we expect it to. Alrighty, here we go. This is looking good. So we've hit 50. That's what we wanted to hit because we set up that attack to go to 50. Um, so this staging chaos pipeline is currently running. We're observing it. Everything is looking good. So we're going to keep running that because of the way that we've set up our auto scaling groups. I'm just going to show you that over here. Um, this is it right here. Right now we set it design capacity is one, but we do have automating automated scaling setup. If 
we have average CPU utilization at 30, then we will add more instances. If it goes down, then we'll actually remove instances. So that's the target um, tracking policy that we set up to this. I'll just show you how you can modify that. You can change the value right there. Um, we have it based on CPU utilization. You can also do average network in, network out, um, or load balance or request count per target. You can also dis dis disable scale in and create an only, only a scale out policy there as well. But we wanted to scale up and then scale back down. Um, so everything's nice and automated for us and we don't have to remember to manually go and scale things down later on. So what we want to see is as this does get to 50 and stay at 50 um, for a while, it's going to realize the average is actually at 50 right now. We need some new instances. So you can see on the right here, I have the auto scaling group has a total instance of one right now, and we don't have any pending instances yet. So we're just waiting for that to change in our monitoring and alerting. We do expect that we should see an alarm here as well. This will go red. Um, if everything works correctly. Oh, look, we've got three instances. So it looks like we are starting to get more instances. We can see that in the EC2 dashboard. Just waiting for this to show up over here as well. Oh, yep, we do have our alarm now. Alrighty, so we got the alarm. CPU utilization above 30 for three data points within three minutes. So this means that we're going to add more instances. Um, the alarm went off. You can see it's spiking there. This is the alarm threshold and it's currently in alarm. So it's going to stay in alarm until that CPU goes down. But because of the way that we built this pipeline, the CPU is going to stay there. So it's going to actually, um, continue to be there for quite a long time. 17 minutes unless we halt this but we're not going to halt it right now we're going to let it keep going because we do want to see that we do get more instances because of this issue so we did get one more um let's go and check out you know everything still works good we've got our load balancer yep we're able to go to our site everything is still running still looking great oakley so now, um, you know, but we're, we're just initializing this new server. So it's still, you know, waiting to come up fully. We're still in alarm. Let's go back over to our dashboard. You can see here it's, you know, almost got that new instance in the pool. It's at 1.2 um, because it's still initializing. All righty. Okay, so this is going to take us a little bit of time. Um, so we'll just wait here for this to finish off. And let's start to think about other types of chaos engineering um, gauntlet attacks that we want to run. What happens if I was to shut down one of the staging machines using Gremlin? I could, for example, do a new attack and do a shutdown attack. What do we expect to happen? Um, if I shut down the new instance, then I expect that I'll be back down to one instance, but CPU will still be high because we were attacking that initial instance. So then it should actually kick in auto scaling again and give me another instance. That's for example, what I would expect, but we never know unless we actually test it out. So that's what chaos engineering is all about. Why do it on staging instead of just production? I think it's a really good way to make sure that staging is healthy and mirrors production. It also helps you to just Find these failure modes early. Find failure modes with your auto scaling configuration, how things are set up. Um, make sure that you find any new issues that get introduced because of new code, new services, new applications. You know, you might suddenly be spiking CPU because um, something's not being built correctly. Uh, there's a lot of processes running. You know, there's process spawn happening. So that's the type of thing that you'll be looking for. So let's refresh this, um, our EC2 screen. So we see here, yep, all is looking good. Go back and check our site. Yep, staging's looking great. Uh, we'll refresh this as well. Alrighty, cool. So you can see here, um, we're going up and the auto scaling group is looking good. Alrighty, so you can see here, it's still spiking at 50. So that's shown us there that um, we do have an extra instance that we were given based on that um, chaos engineering attack that we ran with Gremlin. And we did learn a lot from that. So we're able to deploy our web application in an automated way using CICD and then run automated chaos engineering attacks with Gremlin and Jenkins using a nice modular chaos pipeline 
Then we use Gremlin and CloudWatch to also validate that auto scaling works as expected. And we can see it in our monitoring and alerting. Awesome, that was cool. So now that we've covered how to integrate Gremlin and do chaos engineering with your CI CD pipelines. Now what I want to cover is how you can validate monitoring and alerting to have high visibility from staging to production. The first thought that a lot of people have when you ask them if they're happy with their monitoring is, eh, have you ever met anyone that said they love their monitoring so much and were perfectly happy with it? I haven't yet. If you have, I'd love to hear from you. What are you doing that everyone else isn't? I think the reason that it's so hard is it's actually really complicated as you know, we have these huge distributed systems these days. We have a lot of things that we need to look after when we're working in this space. Infrastructure is quite complicated. Our applications are more complicated. We have a lot more engineers writing code every day, deploying changes. There's a lot that can happen. There's also a lot that can go wrong, but Many teams don't validate or test that their monitoring works as, as expected. And that's a really great way to make sure that you don't encounter failures that could have been prevented just by doing some chaos engineering work proactively to validate your monitoring and alerting. And, and if you don't validate it, this can actually lead to blind spots that can prolong high severity incidents. So for example, you won't even know that an incident's not occurring for hours perhaps days. Sometimes I've seen it be even worse. Years at the worst is what I've seen. So we want to make sure that our monitoring is working as we want it to. So what we're going to do is we'll use chaos engineering, engineering to inject a controlled amount of failure with Gremlin and we'll validate that we can actually observe this failure with our monitoring. If you never validate it, does it really work? Okay, demo time. Alrighty, so for our monitoring and alerting um, validation demo, I want to show you what it looks like when our attacks finished running a little bit after that. Um, so you can see here, this was our spike in CPU and then it went down. Um, but you can see here, we also got this alarm. So let's check that out. So you see here, we have two um, instances running in our auto scaling group. The alarm went off and it says um, CPU utilization is less than 21 for 15 data points within 15 minutes. So this is saying that the auto scaling group alarm is low and we're going to actually kick in the scaling down. Um, so if you remember from how I set up the auto scaling group earlier, um, it will actually scale back down so that we can save on resources, um, which is a really smart thing to do to make sure that you set that up. Definitely recommend it, but you also don't want it to be, um, you know, too sensitive, you want it to happen at the right amount of time. So right now, if I refresh this, you'll see um, it's actually shutting down that second instance because we don't need it anymore. Um, it's realized based on CPU utilization. And so we'll go back to just having one. Uh, let's actually check out that our load balancer is still working. Yep, everything looks good there. So the load balancer is directing us to the correct, um, to the correct location and all is looking great. Um, and so, yeah, just to show you that there, that all looks good to me. The alarm will eventually go off um, once everything is looking good and we've got one instance back again, properly set up after it's terminated. So, awesome. Now to wrap up, I'd like to share some lessons, some chaos engineering success stories, case studies and research. Something cool that we recently launched on October 6 is the Gremlin Chaos Champion program. So this was launched by Aileen and you can check that out on our blog if you go to gremlin.com slash blog. If you like, you can also actually nominate yourself or a friend, a coworker and have them become a Chaos Champion because of the great work that they're doing in the community and also technically, we're looking for technical experts that are helping everybody else learn as much as they can about chaos engineering. We have our first batch of folks that we awarded as chaos champions. They have the title now. We have Jen Reimer. So she's over in Raleigh in the USA. 
She's just recently started doing chaos engineering and has done an amazing job at getting her team to uncover failure modes before they hit production. She's in a QA team, so she's doing lots of great work there leading that team. Matt, so he's been practicing chaos engineering for quite a while now and he works over at Workiva. If you check out Matt, he also recently gave a great talk at ChaosConf all about black swan events. Adam, Adam's over at Toyota and he's in the USA too. And Adam has also been practicing chaos engineering for quite a long time. He, also, he says that he feels that chaos engineering has enabled him to feel comfortable to be on any on-call rotation that he could get thrown on. Now he feels ready to go. And Chitanya, he's been doing awesome work at the National Australia Bank in Melbourne on chaos engineering within with CICD. So his team is actually running a gauntlet of attacks with Gremlin and Jenkins and AWS to be able to find and catch failure early before it makes it to production. They're also running game days and training up their teams on chaos engineering. So these are our four champions, Jen from SAS, Matt from Workiva, Adam from Toyota, and Chitanya from the National Australia Bank. Congratulations, really excited to award them these titles. The National Australia Bank also wrote up a medium post called Observability in the Realm of Chaos Engineering, where they said that observability not only helps you avoid failures, but manage them as well. That's an awesome read. It goes into detail about their, how they monitor their services, their infrastructure on AWS, and what kind of chaos engineering work they're doing. It's really great. I did some research recently too on different types of failures that have occurred on Kubernetes. So I did some, I went back and looked at all of the outages that have happened that had been reported and bucketed them into different categories based on being CPU failures, disk, black hole, memory, latency, IO, security, that type of thing. And then I actually went through and thought, if I was going to reproduce these incidents using chaos engineering, what would I do? And I actually reproduced 12 of the most common types of outages that have already hit Kubernetes, hit big companies, cause massive outages. You can read this article on Medium, click on the link and actually run that scenario in Gremlin just with one click and then just running it against your, your actual hosts, your pods in Kubernetes. All you need to do is install the Gremlin Helm chart and you can get started. I'd love to continue the conversation you can chat with me and our entire team over at Gremlin, as well as over 6,000 of us that practice chaos engineering. We're all in the chaos engineering Slack. Just go to gremlin.com slash Slack to find us. Thank you so much.